Let me start by mentioning that uh, the challenges of the flooding in eastern Kentucky only continue. Uh, everything from uh, power outages increasing to our first set of confirmed deaths. In a word, uh, this event is devastating. And I do believe it will end up being one of the most significant uh, deadly floods that we have had in Kentucky in at least a very long time. There are going to be a lot of people out there that need our help. There's going to be a lot of people that are going to be displaced. And this is yet another uh, disaster that is going to take some time to rebuild. But I want folks, even though there are folks waiting to be rescued right now, uh, to know is we're going to be there for them today. And I talk about the resources that are bring, being brought to bear. But we're going to be there for them uh, once they're safe and once they start thinking about what's next as well. So counties that have issued declarations of states of emergencies, these are just the counties that have done it, and we probably don't have them all here. Uh, Perry County, Breathitt County, Clay, Floyd, Letcher, Owsley, Pike, I think the city of Hazard has as well. But my state of emergency that I put into effect this morning is statewide. It allows us to go into counties that may not have declared their own, but it lets us bring additional resources to bear. It is one of the ways that we deploy our National Guard and one of the ways that we are allowed to ask uh, Washington, D.C. for additional help. Now, the toughest update this morning is we have our first set of confirmed deaths. There's a report that uh, we have lost a uh, Perry County native, an 81-year-old woman, and we've had at least two other fatalities just confirmed, one in Perry County and one in Knott County. But let me say that unfortunately, uh, I expect double-digit deaths uh, in this flooding. That's something that we rarely see. It's going to take time as these come in, and as I'm going to talk about in a little bit, we have more rain tonight in some areas, and we're going to need people to take some steps to keep them safe. Otherwise, even the total that we expect could grow. This isn't just a disaster. It is an ongoing natural disaster. We are in the midst of it. And for some places, it's going to continue through tonight. We hope not con to continue too far after that, though there are possibilities of rain that continue. Power outages by number in, in the counties impacted 25,111. It's anticipated that damage assessment and restoration will continue for several days. Dangerous flooding conditions and inaccessible areas slow the restoration process. So we've got a lot of people that need help that we can't get to at the moment. We will. But we also have uh, uh, different areas that we must reach to turn the power back on that people can't reach. So it's really hard to ask of people going through something like this. But we need a little patience and a little bit of grace because we want to make sure those utility workers are safe doing their job getting to the places that they need to get to. Kentucky Power has the most customers affected, 22,835. Letcher, Knott, Perry, Pike, Breathitt, Martin, Johnson, Floyd counties all have 1,000 or more customers without power. And if I didn't list any of those counties in the states of emergency, first, they're covered by our overall one. Second, I'm sure that they have issued it. It's just how we get information in uh, to the EOC and report it out. Uh, Kentucky Army National Guard, uh, Kentucky National Guard in, in general, we'll, we'll hear from um, General Lamberton here in a minute, but they have four aircraft conducting missions in the affected area. It includes reconnaissance, communication, and hoist operations. And I think the general would tell you, I mean, they see a number of people in Breathitt County alone. On the roof, even we have some people in trees hanging on, uh, waiting for rescue. Those folks are working really hard. Uh, our one limitation is how many aircraft have the hoist capabilities. For that reason, today I reached out to West Virginia's uh, governor and, and General Lamberton reached out to their adjutant general. They are sending us two aircraft with those capabilities and we are uh, grateful. I also talked to the White House uh, today and mentioned our uh, needs in that area. And let me say the FEMA uh, administrator uh, contacted me personally. 
uh, had just gotten off a plane and this was the first information that she wanted to get uh, firsthand. We will have a FEMA response team on the ground by tonight uh, in these areas. We appreciate how quickly they're moving. Two aircrafts are preparing to lift off from Frankfurt to Louisville to pick up uh, equipment. What they'll be getting are Zodiac uh, uh, boats. Uh, these will augment the fish and wildlife boats that are right now uh, conducting rescues. It will give us more capabilities uh, to help folks both today uh, and tomorrow. I've been over there personally with the National Guard and everybody I'm going to be talking about, they are working hard. They are working fast. They are being as flexible as they can and they're bringing every resource they have to, to, to bear. Kentucky State Police is responding and actively searching for missing people. I will say that the troopers, though, are also directly affected by this flooding. Um, also challenges in getting to places that people need help. If you have a missing loved one in the counties of Breathitt, Knott, Letcher, or Perry, please don't call 911, but call the KSP Post. This will help us to check in on them. That number is 606-435-6069. Nine. And this is because this post covers these counties. But let me say this again, it's important because we want to make sure your loved one is out there and safe. And what we found out in the tornadoes is sometimes we had assumed the worst, but then we got the miracle that we prayed for and we're able to account for people. So if you are in Breathitt, Knott, Letcher, or Perry, and you can't find a loved one, you believe they're missing, call 606 435 6069 and if it's busy keep calling i hate to ask you to do that but they're getting a lot of calls because of what they do and the amount of damage that is out here no matter how long it takes you to get through we need the name of your loved one and that information so please get that to ksp a command staging area has been established at the hazard armory for emergency personnel only public should not travel to the affected areas until emergency personnel gives the all clear. I also want to give a big thank you to um, our, our Deputy Fire Chief in Lexington, who is also a part-time general in the National Guard. Uh, through his leadership, we're deploying um, more boats uh, out of Lexington Fayette County uh, to help uh, these over there in the EOC with everybody. Kentucky Transportation Cabinet, Knott and Letcher County has been hit hard. Pike, Martin, and Floyd counties are also sending reports of slides and high waters. Extreme historic levels of flooding has been reported in northern Perry County and southern Breathitt County. Crews are assessing the impacts and are faced with challenges. They got downed trees, they got mudslides, and they've got staff that are flooded themselves that are trying to get to safety, which impacts uh, the number of people that we can have out there. For instance, our Letcher County maintenance facility is flooded and crews can't even access some of their equipment. Crews are trying to help reopen roads where possible to help emergency responders access areas. So we're sending lots of folks outside of this area into this area. For those that live in the area that are responding right now, please tell those folks thank you because they are victims just like everybody else in this area. They very well could have lost their home and are out there helping out somebody else who has lost their home. So please think about those folks. We're also seeing widespread water outages. This can occur because of a loss of power, for instance, in Martin County. We think that's going to get up and running. That's a piece of good news. But this can also cause a lot of water breaks. Think about the amount of water moving through the sewer or the pressure that the flood can cause. So um, the London uh, Oneida area has 300 to 400 customers affected. Manchester Waterworks need the floodwaters to recede in order to work on leaks. At this time, the road to the plant is blocked and workers had to walk to deal with the muddy water and the like. A boil water advisory will be issued once they are able to get further information. From Hyden Leslie County Water District, the northern end of London is affected, but progress is being held up by access again and communication issues. We have uh, very spotty cell service. There are at least two of our major companies, I believe it's both AT&T and Verizon, that we are in direct contact with that are trying to deploy their assets. Remember, they got to be able to get to somewhere safely, though, too, 
to ultimately deploy that. Uh, Boonville Water and Sewer advises around 70 customers are out of water in areas fed by Buffalo Creek um, and, and uh, hoop flurry tanks. Outages are due to power outages and leaks, but they're still assessing that situation. Jackson Municipal Waterworks Plant is experiencing issues due to flooding at intake. Plant controls possibly damaged due to lighting. Plants operating at decreased capacity. System-wide boil water advisory issued at this time. Operators unable to assess damage due to high water. And then the Whitesburg water system in Letcher County, uh, the rivers over their raw water pump control panel. The plant is shut down and cannot be started until the floodwaters drop. They cannot get to the plant safely at this time. They're not aware of any other damage. They will have access using a boat. So let's have one piece of good news. Martin County, I was over at the EOC when, when their plant went down. We were talking about getting them a generator. Their water should be restored by 1 p.m. Eastern time. I think they've been able to get their power up and back on. So a lot of widespread damage. I think we're going to have a number uh, of deaths. Roads completely uh, washed out. Uh, homes uh, destroyed. S schools flooded. Buildings that are at least in the short term going to be uninhabitable. So we want to make sure people know where they can go where we can provide you ultimately a dry place. Uh, so anyone who's been displaced, three state parks have been open to receive you, even though they are having their own impacts. They're Jenny Riley State Park in Prestonsburg, Pine Mountain State Park in Pineville, and Buckhorn State Park in, in Buckhorn. Now, each of these counties are also setting up different shelters. We're going to put out a list of those because those are places that are going to need water and cleaning supplies. And later today, and we have this in the notes, we'll be launching a Team Eastern Kentucky Flooding Relief Fund. These families are going to need help, much like our families in Western Kentucky. They are also going through one of the worst disasters of this type that we have seen. So the Department for Medicaid Services is working with our contracted managed care organizations and Meta Impact to ensure members impacted by the Eastern Kentucky flooding will have access to medications. I was also working directly with our Department of Public Health today. Uh, they are monitoring and working with uh, senior homes, with nursing homes, to make sure we have plans in place if they have to be evacuated to be able to do it safely. They are also in charge of tracking deaths for this. Uh, we have a representative from the Coroner's Association that's with us directly in the EOC uh, feeding us information. Toughest news that I have for today is there is a chance for maybe another two to three inches tonight and maybe through the weekend. We got light rain now scattered through this afternoon. It looks like most of the rain is going to come overnight and that can be really dangerous. Right now, and this can change, the predicted area includes McGoffin, Pike, Powell, Wolf, Johnson, Floyd, Martin. It could reach Laurel, Clay, Leslie. Listen, they could get a lot. So folks, if the water is close to your house, if you are in a place that, that floods regularly or with a lot of rain might flood, the ground is really saturated. If you're in these areas or even close to them, and you can go stay with somebody else tonight, please do. You know, last night, most likely, we lost people in the middle of the night, maybe even in their sleep. We want you to be safe. And so if you're in these areas and you got family or friends or anybody, you've got to go stay in a hotel uh, somewhere throughout the night that you know will be safe, please do it. Again, I already think we're going to have double-digit deaths in this, and I don't want to lose anybody else. And so anybody else out there who's listening, whose family are in these areas, call them, right? Offer to put them up tonight if they can uh, get to you. Uh, for those that are in areas that are fine, good. But again, if you think that you're facing danger, please uh, take that action. We, we care about you and we know that this is coming. All right, a couple of other tips in dealing with flooding. Watch your step. Floodwaters often hide sharp and dangerous debris like broken glass and metal. Floodwater can also be contaminated with oil, gasoline, and sewage. 
Second, don't drive through big amounts of standing water, especially in running water, which is what we're seeing right now. We believe we may have had a major truck, maybe even a tractor trailer swept away that we might have lost two people in. We're waiting on confirmation of that. No, don't risk that, right? Your life is way too important. Your family is way too important. Wear appropriate protective clothing and gear, such as boots, gloves, and safety glasses when moving debris. Remember, with more rain tonight, you know, we can replace stuff. We can't replace you. Stay away from electrical utility equipment after a storm or if it's wet. Report any utility issues to your company, utility company. Flooded homes are dangerous. Get a professional to check for loose wires, mold, and hidden damage before re-entering. Use generators or other gas-powered machinery only outdoors. I can't tell you how many storms that we have had that everybody is going to make it through, especially ice storms, and then somebody puts a generator in their attached garage or in their house or too close to their house, and we lose them through carbon monoxide poisoning. Let's make sure that that doesn't happen. Again, never drive into a road covered by flowing water. One foot of flowing water can sweep a car off a road. Two, an SUV or a pickup. Six inches of water can knock you off your feet. So don't do it. Don't drown. Respect barricades and posted signage. If you encounter a flooded road, turn around. If you encounter a dark traffic signal, treat it as a four-way stop.